Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The FNM chairman responds to McElpine's involvement in yesterday's protests. Members of parliament argue over the prime minister's interests in Bahamas fast ferries. news is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. On the heels of a major protest which saw hundreds of fed up Bahamians pushed through barricades and called for the Prime Minister's resignation, Free National Movement Chairman Carl Culmer dismissed the march as a carefully orchestrated move by the Minnesota administration's political opponents and insisted that support for the governing party remains strong. He also took aim at Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine. Julian Gray reports. As the heat dies down following that protest yesterday, the FNM chairman is speaking out about Frederick McElpine's involvement in that march, stating that the FNM parliamentarian was elected to make decisions not to protest. As for the hundreds of angry protesters who stormed Parliament Square to speak out against high electricity bills and booed the Prime Minister, Carl Culmer insisted it was not an indictment on the Minnesota administration, but rather a carefully orchestrated political move of smokes and mirrors by the opposition. The poor protesters are organized. As you can see, the leaders were strictly PLPs and of one or two disgruntled FNMs. Um, the PLP is not satisfied with the administ um, with, with, the, with them losing and they're trying everything to be rebellion with the uh, Bahamian society. Leaders of the FNM took part in similar protests while in opposition. While Culmer agrees that the government can do a better job at communication, he says the party is not losing support, claiming that many want change to happen overnight when the government is moving methodically to correct issues. The FNM has been in, in uh, administration for some 19 months and you know uh, 19 months a lot of places expect miracles uh, and, they're, and they're expecting us to reverse all the um, downturns and the economy, the unemployment, the crime, the loss of jobs that the PLP has left on the box of the Bahamian people, high prices. Uh, they are something that we are now trying to correct. He also aimed fire at Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine, who sided with protesters. McElpine said never has he seen such anger and frustration with a government that has been in power for less than two years. He added this level of discontent is usually experienced in a governing party's fourth year in office. While the FNM chairman suggested McElpine needs to decide whose side he is on. You're either for or you're against. Um, the people elected him to go in the House of, of, of Parliament and represent their concerns. They didn't um, elect him to demonstrate, they, they elected him to make decisions. And he should have been in the House yesterday making a decision on behalf of Pine, on, of Pine Ridge um, um, voters. Comer said there is and has been an open invitation for the Pine Ridge MP to discuss any complaints he has. However, that invite has gone unanswered. Michael Pine needs to sit down and to, and to himself and find out exactly what are the issues that he's um, retaliating against. I've, I've opened the doors and a lot of other folks have um, said to him, what are, the, what are the issues? Do you have an issue? Can you come and discuss it? He has yet to come to me or any person that I'm, I'm aware of to discuss any matters that he is referring to. Uh, one, on one hand, he said he support Minas. On the, on the other hand, he has a problem with Minas. You know, um, you can't be a double-minded man. You, you must be able to Stick, stick to one script. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has said Wednesday's protest was a display of democracy. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. All right, thanks, Jillian. While well, debate in the House of Assembly got heated last night after a row broke out over Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis's interest in Bahamas fast ferries. The matter prompted the Prime Minister to address speculation that the company is seeking a government contract. Jasmine Brown has more. That argument over the Prime Minister's involvement in Bahamas fast ferries sparked quite a bit of debate between the Prime Minister and members of the opposition. I have to raise this, Speaker. Who are the shareholders? And I've seen a return, Mr. Speaker. I've seen a return, Mr. Speaker. 
And I saw that the third largest shareholder is a Dr. Hubert Minnis. No, man. What? Yes, Mr. Speaker. No. And, and I'm calling on him. I don't want to embarrass him, but I'm calling on him to a redress. This is not right. This is not right. It was this question from Anglerton MP Glennis Hannah Martin that sparked a response from the Prime Minister, who admitted to being a shareholder in Bahamas Fast Ferries. Hannah Martin claimed Fast Ferries is in the mailboat business and asked the Prime Minister to come clean about whether he is the third largest shareholder in the company. Minnis admitted to having shares, but he denied any knowledge of the company's possible interest in a government contract. I have shares in the Fast Ferry, yes. I have shares in CIBC, yes. I have shares in Commonwealth Bank, not Commonwealth Bank, I have shares in Commonwealth Brewery, yes. I have shares in many other entities in here and throughout the world. But I am not involved in the management, the day-to-day -day assessment of any of them. Full stop. The PM's admission did nothing to quell the opposition's queries as Hannah Martin pressed on not only prompting another response from Minnis, but also from former Transport Minister Frankie Campbell. I thought the member would answer the question on these, the state subsidizing fast ferries. And his interest in it and not declaring it. I would like to say it. Yes, and the interest... I have shares in many companies, <laughs> both Bahamas and throughout the world. I do not know anything about the day-to-day -day running of any of them. Full stop. But there is no new agreement entered into between the government and any mailboat entity since the Sydney Collie era. Opposition leader Philip Brave Davis fired back, saying Minnis should have declared his involvement in that company, like Sinan's MP Brent Simonet did when the Minnis administration sought to rent space in his premises for the general post office. His comments prompted a quick clapback from the Sinan's MP, who slammed Davis for suggesting the PM is interested in a government contract. It has come to light that he is a shareholder, which is confirmed. Right. And she's also come, she's also brought to light, which has already been in the public domain, that he very likely now is interested in a government contract. Now, did I say that? Did I say that? I did not say that. I did not say that. Listen, listen. Yo, please listen to what I'm saying, please. I did not say that. The Honorable Member for Cat Island said, he is interested in a government contract. Now, that is exactly what you said. I'm, if you can't hear your own self think, that's your problem. The rest of us over here said you say very succinctly, he, H-E, he is interested in a government contract. So please stop smudging in here because you do it very well but very badly, okay? Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Right, thanks, Jasmine. Well, a swine flu death has led Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands to urge Bahamians to get a flu vaccine. So what I can confirm is that we have had two laboratory confirmed cases of H1N1 influenza. And of the two laboratory confirmed cases, one of those patients died. That is not to say that those are the only cases of H1N1. Just as when we spoke about the Vibrio parahemolyticus cases, uh, there are clinical cases and there are laboratory confirmed cases. If you look historically at uh, the number of cases of influenza in the Bahamas per year, it ranges anywhere from 200 and some to 650. Sands declined to reveal the age and sex of the person who died. He says while everybody should get a flu vaccine, there are groups at greater risks than others. Everybody older than six months of age ought to get a flu shot. Now, there are certain categories of, in, of individuals who are at higher risk. So healthcare workers, young people, elderly people, people that are immunocompromised. So if you're on steroid medication, if you have HIV, uh, people that are morbidly obese, so that's somebody with a body mass index greater than 40, which means a significant amount of us. Uh, you have people that take care of young children. Um, I may have mentioned healthcare workers, uh, people that uh, live in uh, daycare or chronic care facilities. San says the flu has a destructive track record and urged Bahamians not to take the risk of contracting the virus lightly. In 19, I think 18, the world saw 100 million people die from H1N1. 100 million people. 
Last year in the United States, you had 70 to 80,000 people die from influenza. This is not an insignificant problem. And unfortunately, um, uh, there is so much mythology circulating about vaccines. Oh, vaccines do this. Oh, vaccines do that. Vaccines do the next thing. Sand says Bahamian tradition also creates challenges. You also have um, a number of home remedies and superstitious um, historical Bahamian views. So if you get wet in the rain, you can get the cold or get the flu. If your mole get wet, you can get the flu. Um, none of that is true, but it's hard to convince some of us that it's not. Still to come on our news, why electricity bills remain high even after global fuel prices dropped. Plus, find out what's cooking in the Green Parrot Kitchen this Thanksgiving. Stay tuned.